Hello students, today we are going to start the next part, the evidences of evolution we are discussing earlier in two videos. Is, videos we have seen the evidence of evolution, first one is paleontological evidence and second evidence we have seen the um, morphological and anatomical evidence where we have seen the homologous and the analogous organs. Then after that, third type of evidence under the same morphological and anatomical evidence is the vestigial organ okay so the third point itself that is the morphological and anatomical evidence first one we have seen homologous organ second we have seen the analogous organ and the third one is called as the vestigial organ i hope all of you know about the vestigial organ what is the vestigial organ the vestigial organ is present in case of some of the species in a uh, organism which is not functional or it is not complete in that species which is not properly functional in that species but yes it was complete and fully functional in their ancestors okay so those are called as the vestigial organ so what are the vestigial organs Ex uh, definition the remnants of the organs which were functional in their ancestors they are called as the vestigial organ some examples of vestigial organ is the nictitating membrane if you see the eye okay suppose this is the eye in the eye towards the corner suppose if it is the nose here then towards this region there is a small red dot present that is the nictitating membrane what is the nictitating membrane this is actually the horizontal flap which is functional in case of the fishes amphibia reptile it is also found in the birds but not in the mammals it is present as a vestigial organ but not functional okay so what is this this is nictitating membrane in case of the aquatic organism only this nictitating membrane is functional that means even if it is closed through this uh, or a, a transparent uh, vestigial organ nictitating membrane they can see underwater without uh, having any osmosis now the next one auricular muscle of pinna this is the pinna in the pinna region suppose this is the pinna okay here some muscles are present this muscles in case of human now it is not functional it is present but some of the people they have the functional or voluntary muscle in case of normal people it become involuntary we cannot control the movement of the muscle according to our will but yes some of the people they can that is they can move their uh, pinna isn't that it is functional in case of the cows in case of the dogs in case of cats in case of goat horse etc isn't that they can uh, move their pinna so that they can remove the anything flies anything nearby them because they don't have the function or they cannot remove it with the hands as we have already developed hands we don't require this uh, move, um, that movement of the pinna so that's why it is present but not functional next one body hair in case of the mass uh, in case of the males in case of the males the uh, chest hair or beard that is actually uh, present uh, in case of the other mammals in case of the uh, uh, cow goat it is present fully functional in case of the males as a vestigial organ the hairs are present but it is not functional okay even if it is not present it is not going to harm the male next one the caudal vertebrae in case of we already know that some of the vertebrates also some of the mammals also they have the tail long tail is present reptiles have the tail birds don't have but one second mammal have it like suppose in case of the monkeys isn't that as a vestigial organ yes we have the caudal vertebrae but the last coccyx is fused sacral is fused isn't that so caudal vertebrae next one vermiform appendix all of us we know because this vermiform appendix is functional in case of the ruminating animals where the cellulase producing bacteria are present which help in digestion of the cellulose in case of the ruminating animal in case of us it is not functional because we are not the herbivores we are omnivorous if you take the uh, grasses then you are not able to break the cellulose present in the uh, vegetables or in case of the spinex 
uh, we can able to make it um, bolus properly so that the food can have the proper digestion as well as the vitamins, irons, phosphate, anything that is present in the spinach we can able to get, not the starch. Next on the third molar, the third molar which is the last molar that is not functional and yes in the uh, in our uh, in us also among us also lots of people do not grow the third molar some of the people have 28 teeth also throughout their life some people have 32 teeth we know that we have 32 teeth but a number of people they have 22, 28 teeth forever okay so this third molar is also a vestigial organ so what are they vestigial organs they are the remnants of the organ which are functional in the ancestors but they are present in that uh, current organism not doing proper function so that is called as the vestigial organ then after that let us move to the connecting links connecting links means those organisms i will write here the those organisms which share common characters of two different groups maybe it is phylum maybe it is classes maybe it's family order etc okay so see the connecting link sometimes the examples they are coming in the examination so first of all it's a very famous example all of us know that is euglena euglena which is a connecting link between the animals and the plants okay why it is having uh, that uh, euglena is called as the connecting link because it is going to have the chloroplast like the plants and also having characters they can be heterotroph also they are that's why it is called as the connecting link between the animals and the plants next one is proterosponsia it is connecting link between the protozoa and porifera next one that is neopilina which is the connecting link between the annelida and mollusca next one is peripetus which is a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda next one is balenoglossus which is a connecting link between the chordate and the non chordates next one is chimera which is a connecting link between the cartilaginous and the bony fishes and last one is egg laying mammal which is platypus which is the connecting link between the birds and the mammals so yeah that's all about the vestigial organ and the connecting link i hope you understand due to the shutdown of the current the light is going down so yeah you just study these things i will meet you in the next video so yeah that's all about the uh, examples of evidences of evolution vestigial and connecting link i hope you understand thank you